welcome to Behind the Scenes on Doctor Who. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome behind the scenes of a swashbuckling episode of Doctor Who. This episode has it all. Not one, but two heroes. On guard! A gang of outrageous men. <laughs> and of course, an evil villain. So I hope you're ready as we're about to shoot through how they revamped this classic tale. Yes, this timeless British folklore was a perfect target for a Doctor Who regeneration. You really are. Robin Hood and his merry men. Yeah! And it was left to Mark Gatiss to scribe this cunning caper. <laughs> we caught up with Mark during a set visit to find out how this unique combination came about. Well, Stephen asked me to do The Doctor Meets Robin Hood with Robots. And I've always been a huge fan of Robin Hood stories, so it was a joy to do. The weird thing is, the script calls for the weather to be almost too sunny. As I was writing the words, I thought, this is a hostage to fortune, Cardiff, it's going to Porter. And amazingly, this week has been brilliant. And like I said, it's very sunny. Climate change? It's a real romp, uh, but with the serious intent. It's really about the Doctor wrestling with the idea that he's a hero by, by really meeting the, the greatest hero in, in English folklore. Stop! The laughing. Are you all simple? The Doctor may not have liked the banter from this motley crew of outlaws, but Peter sure did love having them on set. It's great to have all the uh, merry men here and to have Tom Riley as Robin, who's doing a fantastic job. There is no contest! <laughs> Tom's delivering all these lines with a buoyancy, liveliness. To be standing around with a, a hat with a feather in it and tights on, it's hard to pull that all off. It's about time we met this legendary hero and found out how he felt about appearing in an episode of Doctor Who. Basically been a fan of Doctor Who for my entire life. So being able to be part of it and to come onto the production, see how it's made and you know, spend some time with the new Doctor, it's a dream come true. And it was Mark Gatiss who put Tom forward for the part. But Tom failed to contain his excitement when he got the call. Do you want to play it cool? You know, you want to be a bit like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll just read the script, Mark, and I'll get back to you. And actually, instead, I just sort of said, yes. He said, do you want to read it? I was like, yes, of course, I, want, I mean, yes, I want to read it. So it's a show you want to be part of, and Mark's episodes are great. He's a fantastic writer, so I'm, I'm really lucky. Tom may have said yes straight away, but he was still nervous about playing such an iconic role. It's always a privilege and uh, a little bit terrifying to play someone that the world already has a set, fixed idea of. And so... Um, it's been really fun playing with expectations, playing with the idea of who Robin Hood is. And it's been a challenge, but it's been such fun. I haven't had this much fun in years. Yeah! Yeah! And it wasn't just Tom having a great time. Jenna quite enjoyed this episode too. It felt like stepping into a storybook. I think the scene where um, we had all of the Merry Men in their cabin, it, you felt like you could just turn a page and that's what it would look like. Well, it's realistic, I'll give you that. And also, Peter and Tom on set are just absolutely hilarious together. I was literally going home exhausted from laughing so much. I was getting a bit too hysterical, so I had to like go sit away from them so they couldn't make me laugh anymore. Right! That is an, an episode featuring Robin Hood wouldn't be complete without the classic villain, the Sheriff of Nottingham, played by Ben Miller. I had a fantastic scene with Jenna um, where I was kind of trying to seduce her to become my queen. I have uh, designs on the English throne. Doesn't every king need a consort? But what did Ben think of playing this evil man? He's really, really fun character to play. Hopefully he's menacing. I think he's quite menacing. He's certainly not someone I'd like to get mixed up with. <laughs> oh, he was brilliant. He really struck a clever, clever balance of the smarmy sheriff, but underneath you could see him kind of calculating and also definite anger management issues that would suddenly come out on a random line. The world! He's just a very clever villain. I think he was brilliant. Oi, what are you doing here? This episode was quite a romp, and Ben was quite taken with our Doctor Who twist of the Robin Hood tale. Not only do I love Doctor Who, but I've always loved the legend of Robin Hood. Would you now? 
There's a wonderful thing about Doctor Who is you can visit a Western or suddenly visit an episode of Robin Hood. It's uh, one of the fantastic freedoms you can have these tremendous one off. Robin Hood isn't the first legendary figure who's crossed the Doctor's path. Not by a long shot. Very early on in the Doctor's travels, he met Marco Polo. And in the same adventure, he encountered the legendary Kubla Khan and probably gambled away the TARDIS when he lost a game of backgammon with him. The Doctor's old pal Winston Churchill also tried to get his hands on the TARDIS. And talking of time machines, the author of the time machine, H.G. Wells, helped the Doctor defeat this nasty piece of work, the Borat. But what is it with the Doctor and writers? The Ninth Doctor teamed up with Charles Dickens and together they stopped the mischievous Gelf. The Tenth Doctor had more literary liaisons battling the Carrionites with Shakespeare and solving the mystery of the Vesper form with Agatha Christie. Of course, the Doctor has caught the eye of plenty of queens from Earth's history. The Eleventh Doctor even came face to face with the legendary Egyptian ruler, Queen Nefertiti, who took quite a shine to him. In fact, she wasn't the first historical figure who had designs on becoming the time traveller's wife. He had a small fling, a flingette, with Renette, also known as Madame de Pompadour. And there was a right royal romance with Queen Elizabeth I that ended in marriage. To be fair to the Doctor, he couldn't be sure his apparent bride wasn't a Zygon. Either way, after the ceremony, he was Zygon in 60 seconds, and so when Elizabeth did finally catch up with him, she was happy for her bowmen to have him in their sights. And speaking of bowmen, this classic tale wouldn't have been complete without one particular famous scene. Uh, today we're filming the Grand Tournament, the famous Robin Hood moment where Robin splits the arrow. It's a famous bit of Robin Hood lore, so I had to put it in the script. Of course, it would have been criminal not to include this tournament. And with archery being a Robin Hood trademark, Tom soon had to learn how to use a bow and arrow. I used to do archery when I was a kid, like in the Scouts, and I was OK at it, and I kind of forgotten that I ever did it. And suddenly I can pick up a bow and arrow and it, it all feels very natural. It's quite fun. I keep saying fun. That's the thing about Doctor Who, it's fun. Whether they could shoot a bow and arrow or not, all our cast members were trained and under the supervision of an archery expert. I am the real Robin Hood. I'm actually in the Guinness Book of Records for shooting the most amount of arrows in one minute. 19 hits. Well, you're definitely the man for the job, but who has impressed Dean most? They've all done really well, actually. I showed Tom the other day and he shot some arrows and he actually hit the gold three times out of uh, eight arrows, so yeah, he's, he's a natural. Oh. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I just keep getting bullseyes by accident. Although the actors were expertly trained, the Doctor Who special effects team had to help them split the arrows in two. Danny Hargreaves and his team oversaw this effect as it required specialist knowledge. But how was it done? What we're doing on this funky rig that you can see here, uh, we've got six arrows lined up in order. We pull the arrow up onto the bow, fire it, hits the spot using the cable and then the idea is that the second one we do exactly the same thing and it will split the arrow. Now we've only tested it very briefly and it was very Two, successful. One. We're highly confident it's going to work. Well Danny, now it's time for the big moment. Two, one. <laughs> nice, time to shoot the rest. With the arrows fired successfully, it's another job well done for the effects team. They all split and they all hit the mark, so I'm happy. It wasn't only the fantastic special archery that caught our eye in this episode, we also had some wonderful period costumes. It was like a Clara's modern version of wanting to be made Marion, I think. So that was um, very fun. Clara may have liked her costume, but the Doctor didn't even get a look in. I quite like the fact that I don't have a period of costume in this because it means I cut more of a swathe through them all, otherwise I'd just disappear. Although the costumes looked the part, they weren't the most comfortable for the cast. Yes, the costume is a little tight. Uh, it's tight in all the wrong places. I currently can't feel my ankles, but these are pretty tight trousers. I'm full on skinny jeans, Robin Hood. So, don't you like your costume? It's lovely, it's just hot. You know, it's hot to sword fight in, it's hot to jump about on beams and roof to roof under studio lights in, uh, with leather pressed against your skin. And just like their costumes, things got really heated when these two arch enemies had their epic duel. 
I have a sword fight with, with Robin Hood and uh, there's a lot of sort of jumping up on beams and ropes and you know, a lot of kind of daring do in our sword play. That's all been great fun to rehearse and I've never done a sword fight before so that's been really good fun. I'm all right at sword fighting. I've done a lot of sword fighting for stage. It's quite different sword fighting for stage than TV. On stage, you actively try not to hit each other. TV, you have to make it look like it can connect. First of all, just concentrate on getting the moves right, but then as you progress, you actually want to really try and hit the other person where you're supposed to be hitting them. Oh, are you still talking? Well, it appears the sheriff was the better swordsman after all. Bow down before your new king. But someone is a bit of a sore loser. The sheriff didn't beat me. The sh I, I, I mean, what are you talking about? My gut that the sheriff beat me. The sheriff didn't beat me. When does the sheriff of Nottingham ever beat Robin Hood in the end? The sheriff may have been beaten in the end, but it wasn't as easy when Tom went toe to toe with the doctor. Me and Peter have a fantastic fight. The Doctor with a spoon versus Robin with a sword. This is my spoon! On guard! The Doctor's sword skills are impressive, to say the least. Even the Doctor had a fencing match with Robin, but how did Peter get on with such a technical scene? I'm just useless at all of that stuff, at any kind of you know, physical activity, dancing or anything. It's one of those things you have to just keep practising. Uh, you have to absorb it into your muscle memory, and there's dialogue with it as well. And a flint! It all looks easy. That's the trick of all this stuff, is to try and make it look effortless. But uh, believe me, it's not. After a hard day's filming, Peter got a nice surprise on set. I didn't tell anybody because you reach a certain age and you just don't want to make a fuss or anything. But the runners had put all balloons and happy birthday banners up in my trailer and bought me wonderful gifts, there was a cake on the same, everybody was just so kind. But it was lovely, it was absolutely great. With another episode complete, there's only one more thing left to say. Thanks for watching. <laughs>